Hey guys, and welcome back to a new video. Well, this is a kind of a milestone. It's kind of a special video because for the first time ever, I'm going to dive into character related topics, right? I've been saying for the last six years, I don't do characters. I recently started getting into that. So in today's video, we're going to be doing a UV mapping session on a character head. All right. So that said, let's jump in. Let's get started. Here we go. This video has been made possible by Luxion, the creators of Keisha. Okay guys, so we're in my 2019 and we're gonna be UV mapping a character head, right? So it's finally there, we're finally gonna be doing character stuff. Okay, so before we dive into today's video, I want to put out a huge thumbs up to my patrons. Now, I love my channel sponsor, Luxion, no doubt about it, uh, but my patrons, they are you guys, right? You guys have been supporting my channel for such a long time, and your financial support helps me to continue to make videos, right? So here are my uh, current patrons, and thank you guys so much. If you want to become a patron and get early access to videos and shared files and whatnot, I'll put a link below, right? Okay, so today's video, UV mapping a character head. Well, a quick recap of what UVing is. If I take a, let's say a simple cube and I go up to UV and UV editor, what you will see is basically a 2D representation of a 3D object, okay? So try to think of it as a piece of paper that you cut up with scissors to have something you can wrap around an object to make it fit. So let's say the cube is white, you have a piece of red paper, you want the cube to be red, you take a piece of red paper, you cut it into shape, fold it around the cube and you got a red cube. That's all there's to it, right? Now, the thing is with a cube, that's pretty simple and straightforward. However, if you are dealing with a character, totally different ball game, right? So we're gonna get rid of this and we're gonna get started. Now, I wanna make sure that we're all on the same page. So we're gonna be using a character head that's available in Maya. So we can use the same model, all of us, right? So make sure you're in the modeling menu and you're gonna go up to uh, generate. You're gonna go to get brush down here. And this is what used to be called the advisor menu in the former version of Maya. And we're gonna go under modeling and then we're gonna go to uh, sculpture base mesh. We're gonna go to bipeds and here you have a basic head, okay? So let's uh, double click on that. It's gonna bring in a huge head and here it is and it doesn't have to be that big so i'm just going to click on it and hit r to scale it way down closer to our grid here hit f to zoom in we'll hit w to move it up a little bit and i don't really like that shiny color on it so i'm just going to go in here right click assign new material and let's put in a simple lambert okay there you go so this is the guy that we need to uv okay now, uh, when it comes to UVing objects like this, what you want to be careful of is that your uh, texture doesn't uh, stretch or warp or anything like that, right? Now, the last video I did was on how to avoid the stretching in your texture. That's gonna be applicable to this situation as well, so keep that in mind. And one of the best ways to see whether that's the case or not is to apply a checkered pattern to your model. So we applied the Lambert. I'm gonna go into this uh, checker box at the end here. I'm going to select file, go into this folder right there, and I'm going to go over here, and I got this pattern that looks a little bit like this, and you can just open that up. And when I hit this checkered ball up here, you'll see that we have that pattern on our model. Now, uh, you can download these uh, patterns uh, for use for UV uh, modeling, UV mapping, and I'll put a link below. But you can see here that it's stretched, it's warped, it's all over the place, okay? And we didn't even project anything yet. So let's take our model right here and we're gonna go up to UV. And here you need to decide on a projection. So you got automatic, best plane and so forth. Right now, I don't really care because I'm gonna be cutting everything manually anyway. So I'm just gonna go in here and click on camera based. And when you do that, and we'll just open that up. Let's go to UV and UV editor. You'll get literally a camera based projection. Okay, this right here. But like I said, don't really care. Now, um, we need to see if we've got any warping going on here. And you can see we've got a lot of warping and stretching going on in the face because the things are not set up properly just yet. 
and what we're going to do is we're going to just make sure that this pattern is a bit more detailed. So I'm going to go into my Lambert material. I'm going to check this guy. I'm going to go up to my place 2D texture and I'm going to repeat the UV a couple of times. So let's go to, let's say four by four and that will give me something with a little bit more detail. Okay. Now you can see that from this side, not too bad because that's where we projected from, but going over here, it's a very bad, right? Now I only need this to see whether we've got stretching. So I'll turn that on when I want to check that. But for now I'm going to turn it off because it's uh, kind of distracting and we'll move this out of the way for a second. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to cut up my model. Now, um, when you do a model cut up like this, you would normally follow, let's say, seams of clothing. So if you had, um, I don't know, let's say a t-shirt on, you would have seams on the shoulders, around the neckline, and then maybe uh, around the arms and so forth, right? Now with the face, uh, kind of different situation because you normally don't have something on your face. And um, so we need to find ways to cut it up in a way that it doesn't look too obvious. Now I need to have my symmetry on. You can see it's not on right now. So I'm going to go in here into my UV toolkit and I'm going to go to symmetry and turn that on in object X direction. Now check your model if that's correct for you. So down here you can see that X is pointing to the right. So now if I go in here, you can see I got symmetry, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut and start above the eye line. So right click, go to edge and I'm going to start, let's say here and then go into about here, I would say and select that and hit enter or go in here to cut. And as we do that, you'll see that now has a white line and I'm going to go in here and then I'm going to follow the hairline all the way back. So I'm going to start in the middle here, flip it around, go all the way down to the back here, double click right there. And I'm going to hit G to repeat last command. And now we have a cut line there as well. So what this will do is it will cut open the face, if you will, starting above the eyes, split open the head to the back and all the way down there, right? And I also probably want to have the neck separate as well, or not the neck, but the shoulder line. So I'm going to go in here and let's try this guy all the way around. And I got symmetry on, so that's good. Hit the G to repeat last command. And now I have a cut there as well. So imagine this being 2D paper or fabric or whatnot. You would have kind of a piece of cloth going around over the front with one seam in the back. Okay. Not quite there yet. Uh, I want to have something in front here for the chin and so forth as well, because we need to fold this face flat, if you will. And for that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow that chin line and I'm going to go from, let's say, maybe a bit lower from here and I'm basically just going to go and move forward to there and we're going to go to cut. There you go. And then from there, I want to go down in the middle from there to here. Double click, hit the G to repeat last command. So we're going to cut there as well. And again, the whole idea here is to be able to fold open that face. Now we do have some issues here because we have ears sticking out. Okay. So how do we address that? Well, um, first of all, this is not a very detailed model, but what you want to do here is you want to cut around the ears. So I'm just going to do that. And like I said, I still got, um, symmetry turned on and I like to do this manually. If you have a very obvious flow, you can just double click. I think I could have done that here, but that's okay. So selected that we're going to go to cut. And again, we have the seam going on right there, right? And both sides because there you go. Okay. So now that we have these cuts in place, uh, let's see if we can unfold this a little bit, right? So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to right click go to UV shell. And there you can see, I got one here that I can move. I got one here that I can move and I got some separate ears floating around, right? So I'm going to drag select all of this stuff and I'm going to right click and go to modify and unfold. And that's where the magic starts. Okay. So here is our face here. we got our ears and here we got that neck piece, right? 
Now we're not quite there yet because unfolding is not enough. We also need to relax it or it's not called relax anymore. I think it's called optimize. So I'm going to select this guy and I'm going to right click and go to modify. And then we got optimize. We're going to open up the option box. And here you have a number that you can put in. I'll put in one and I'll hit enter so you can see what happens. Hopefully let's hit apply. And you see a very, very slight change. So I'm going to hit G to repeat. And you can see that's pretty good shape. We're going to select these guys and I am selecting them both because my symmetry is still on. So let's go here to turn that off. G to repeat. And actually because I did something else, I have to go back in and optimize again. There we go. So select this guy and we're going to select this guy. Now we're going to have a little bit more effect on this one. Let's bump up that number. Let's go to option box. Let's set that as maybe two, four. Apply and close. We'll do that here. I think we're all good. Okay. So now it's time to uh, put these all in our zero to one space, right? So I'm going to direct click everything. I'm going to right click and go to modify and we're going to go to layout right here. I'm just going to put everything in that zero to one space, not necessarily how I want it. So I'm going to rearrange that a little bit. And what I want is for this guy to be straight. So I'm going to hit E to rotate that and move that until it's looking pretty straight. I think it is. We'll take this guy, we'll do the same thing. And then we're going to start to move it around. So I'm going to hit W and I'm going to move this and I want to stay in my zero to one space. So push that up. This is going to be the main face area. And then we have our two little ears and I'll put one here and let's put one here just to make sure that things look a bit better. Okay. I think that's good. Now let's see if we still have a lot of stretching going on. So we're going to go in here. We're going to turn on this guy to get our pattern back. And the goal here is to make sure that these squares that you see are um, for the most part, the same size, right? And there's not very, very obvious stretching going on. Now it's, it's certainly not perfect, but it's much, much better than it was. And um, when it comes to texturing here, you need to keep in mind that traditional texturing, let's say like in Photoshop, uh, you would export this UV layout and you would start to hand paint this and you would have to make sure that everything lined up perfectly and whatnot. Now, nowadays, most people are texturing a, a you know, PBR base. So let's say Substance Painter, Quicksol, 3D Code, Mari, something like that. And in that case, you're painting straight onto your 3D object. So you don't have that issue as much, okay? Now, that is basically how that works. So I think this is looking okay. And so I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna go into object mode. I'm gonna select the whole thing, go to file and export selection. And I'm doing that because I want to show you guys what this looks like as an end result. I'm just gonna export that as head OBJ. And I assume you guys know how to export a file. So I'm not gonna switch that over from my other screen. Okay, and then we're gonna go into ZBrush and I'll show you. All right, guys, we're in ZBrush. We're gonna to go to import. We're gonna take our head OBJ. I'm gonna left click and drag, pull that out. Let's hold on shift to snap it. I'm gonna hit T on my keyboard so I can edit it. And then what I'm gonna do is go down here to UV map and we're gonna click on morph UV. And as we do that, you will see the, uh, it's actually upside down, but that's okay. This is our UV map as we created that in Maya. Okay, so I'll click on it again and that will give you a better understanding of what we just did. So hopefully that will help you on your way to get started with a character UV mapping. Uh, if you got any questions about stuff you want me to cover in future videos related to characters, please let me know in the comments. And if I can, I certainly will, right? So thank you guys so much for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.